Obstructive sleep apnea is a sleep-related breathing disorder. It's characterized by the repeated collapse of the upper airway during sleep. The consequences of untreated sleep apnea are wide-ranging. They can include leaving the individual feeling unrested, fatigued and sleepy during the daytime. This in turn results in difficulties with concentration and can have a very profound effect on the quality of life. Hi, I'm Tara. Um, I suffer with sleep apnea. Um, about 18 years ago, I wasn't feeling quite right. There was something that wasn't right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, I'd go to bed on a Friday night. I'd set the video because I'd wake up um, Saturday afternoon. So I'd missed all the TV programs. Um, then I'd go to bed on Saturday evening and wake up on Sunday afternoon. During the night, I was constantly coughing and reaching for a glass of water. Um, I didn't quite know what was going on. I couldn't put my finger on it, as I said, but something wasn't right, so I took myself off to my GP, and she said, explain your symptoms, and I said, I'm extremely tired. I said, I've got very little concentration. Um, no matter how much I sleep, I don't re-energise by the morning. In fact, the more sleep I get, the worse I feel. Um, I didn't know what to do, basically. My name is Bernard Rosen. Uh, my problems go back 30 to 40 years ago when I was uh, a great snorer. I used to snore violently, wake the whole house up, wake myself up. This was a problem, not only to me, but to my, part, my wife and my family. Um, I did, tried everything in the book, the usual stuff that you get on the internet and adverts to um, overcome my snoring. I even went so far as to have the soft um, flesh at the back of my throat burnt out with laser. Very painful, uh, with no effect. The diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea is undertaken by a sleep specialist, who along with a detailed assessment of your sleep, will also organise for an overnight sleep study. The purpose of the sleep study is to allow us to understand the severity of your sleep disordered breathing and specifically its effects on your breathing. While we do not understand completely the reasoning behind the collapse of the upper airway during sleep, we do know that in certain patients the size of the airway tends to be smaller. In addition, the muscles that protect the upper airway during sleep are also impaired in their activity. In addition, we're aware of a number of aggravating factors that can make the condition worse. For example, smoking, alcohol consumption, weight gain and sleeping on your back. So I took myself off to my GP. Um, she explained that she did various blood tests which came back negative. So she said to me, do you snore? And I said, well, I sleep on my own. I don't know. And I couldn't record myself then. So she decided to send me to a specialist at the Ear, Nose and Throat Hospital in London and off I went and there were two sleep tests that I needed to do to prove that I did have sleep apnea. So I was wired up and sent home with um, an oxygen level on my finger and various tubes and some recording instru instruments um, overnight. Came back the following morning and a day later he called me and said I need to see you. And I thought this is really quick and he said your sleep study is so poor I'm not even going to do the second study. I need you to come in because I need to speak to you. Eventually the medical profession picked me up and took me to a hospital where I spent overnight wired up extensively uh, with a video camera on me uh, and uh, pads all over my chest to measure the number of times I woke up during the night and it was um, alarming to hear how many times I woke up during the night, which of this, of course, would be damaging to my heart. Whilst a number of treatment approaches are available for patients with obstructive sleep apnea, the best evidence and results are seen with one of two main treatments. The first includes using mask therapy, sometimes referred to as CPAP. This is a mask which is placed over the face during sleep and delivers a constant level of pressure of air, the purpose of which is to keep the airway open and prevent it from collapsing. Whilst this treatment has become regarded as the gold standard for treatment of severe 
obstructive sleep apnea, and for those who are very symptomatic, its principal limitation is patient acceptance. The principal alternative recommended treatment for patients with obstructive sleep apnea, and particularly for those who are unable to cope with CPAP therapy, is to provide them with a mouthpiece. This is sometimes referred to as a mandibular advancement appliance. These devices essentially are worn at night and temporarily act to advance the lower jaw in a forward position. This in turn can increase the size of the airway by drawing the tongue forward and there is evidence to also suggest that it perhaps stimulates some of the airway muscles to keep the airway open. Such devices are custom made for the patient by a qualified dentist. They have the advantage of allowing the patient to adjust the device on a slow and incremental fashion, thereby increasing their acceptance and tolerability. So the consultant rang me and I went back to see him and he said there's a couple of options for you. Um, the one that I really took to was a mouth brace. So I insert this little brace at night, um, my trusty friend. Um, I can probably sleep one night without it, but then I suffer from the sleep apnea again. So my skin turns grey, I'm tired, I'm not alert enough. So my life has changed. I'll go to a party and you won't find me sitting in the corner with the goats fast asleep. I drive now, I stop driving because I was falling asleep at traffic lights, which I knew was extremely dangerous. But now I can drive, but I can't live without my little friend who has changed my life, basically. So after wearing the brace now for about 18 years, I wake up in the morning not only feeling refreshed, but I've got a lot more energy. I'm more alert that I can focus on the emails that I need to deal with immediately, not sit for three or four minutes to read it over and over again, as I was doing in the past. My skin tone has changed from grey to pink, which is good. Um, Travelling, that's a really interesting one. Long haul flights are quite fun, because if it's a 12 hour flight, I want to sleep and I need restful sleep, not sleep where I stop breathing. So 20 years ago, I was introduced to Dr. It was then Dr. now Professor Joel of this clinic, and um, he introduced me to a mouth splint that drew the front jaw forward, opened the windpipe at the back of my neck, allowed me to sleep with free movement of air. This changed my life. This was 20 years ago. Uh, it was originally a very primitive thing with elasticated sides. Now we have this more modern thing that clips in very easy. It did not cause me, I thought it would cause me considerable stress sleeping with this in my mouth, but it has caused me no stress whatsoever. I have slept with it practically every day for the last 20 years, and this has contributed to my well-being. I have had no snoring, no sleep apnea, as long as I sleep with my splint in my mouth. I may be one of his oldest and most appreciative um, clients. Overall, patient acceptance of these mouthpiece devices is extremely good and they are preferred by patients when given a choice. They are, like CPAP treatment, a lifelong commitment and therefore require regular follow-up. This is a small piece of plastic that's inconvenient for a couple of hours at night. You know what, it gives you back the sense of that you're a living person again. It gave me the fact that I could hold down my job and that I could start driving again. It gave me back my life really because I wasn't happy. Um, I didn't want to meet socially with people because I was constantly falling asleep. There are other options but again you have to do what's best for you but this is very simple, very quick. There's no pain, slight bit of uncomfortableness for the first week or two but perfect for me. I'd like to close by thanking our patients who have volunteered to talk to you about their personal experience of having sleep apnea and its subsequent treatment. It was important, we felt, that for you to see a patient of both genders and to understand the impact that this treatment can have and untreated sleep apnea can have on their lives.